Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about bike drawing for the beginners. And that includes me. I'm not that experienced at doing it. I'm still experimenting with my bike. Bike drawings where you have a dog and it goes out in front of you on a bike and pulls you. Similar to huskies pulling sledges, that sort of thing. But it's not quite the same because the idea is it doesn't, your dog doesn't just pull you along and you sit there. You pedal along with your dog, so it's only pulling a little bit. And the beauty of that is you can use small type dogs for the same thing, whereas you couldn't use them if they were just pulling you. So it's just that little strain. You try and keep them pulling a little bit. Now, I've got a nine month old pull over pup and he's over 40 kilo and he just loves pulling so that's the ideal type of dog you want a bully type a cattle dog type all them herding types they're all good lots of dogs want to pull um, a lot of the like golden retrievers they're just too excited they want to pull a little bit and then wander off and, but a lot of the herding types and the bull types they just want to go the the main one that the professionals use, because it's a professional sport as well, is seems to be German short hair pointers. They they just love running and they're fast and that's what they want the speed. Um, so this is my bike. Don't go out and buy yourself a thousand dollar bike. Experiment first. This bike costs fifty dollars. I put a comfy seat on it, because I'm not a racer. I put some Dutch style handlebars on it, because I want comfort sitting upright. I don't want to be bent over with a bad back when I've finished. So I just want to ride along in comfort, with my dog pulling me, enjoying the ride. I've also put on a little carrier here, which carries the dog's water and a first aid kit. Because if anything happens where I go riding a bike, and most often early in the morning, I want to be able to deal with it myself, so I'll carry a first aid kit. And the thing that you, everyone has to have on their bike, no matter what bike you've got, is your bar here. That holds the line clear of your front wheel. Now, I brought, I brought two commercially made bars and they didn't suit me at all. There's, I've seen people around, they seem to suit some people but I didn't get on with them at all. Because I dropped my bike and crashed on it and I wanted something solid like this one. So I bolted this and this all this is, that's an old back wheel frame from another bike that was an old bike. And I bolted it on there, fitted a plastic pipe with some rings, then you you fit yourself a rope going through with a catch. That comes through and transfers all the pull to your frame and not your handlebars. Once you've got that bit, the next bit you need is one of these. That's your lead rope that you attach your dog to. This is a commercial one and it's really good and it, they're cheap. And in that, all the all bungee rope, all lead ropes have got to have a bungee. You see, like that. That takes a shock when your dog goes over a bump or takes off and start takes the shock out. What I found with my dog, he's so fast and strong and heavy, he really hits the line hard. So I made my own with a bigger bungee. There it is. All that is, is a bungee, two rings, tie a rope to it, and a clip on the end. Then you get that, that goes on your front. Clips on there. That clips on your dog's harness. Now that length, I'll show you with this one. That's the ideal length for 
starting because when you start out your dogs are going to suddenly go sideways and if you've got a long lead stand that up if you've got a long lead they just take you off and go wherever they like so you want the shortest lead possible that isn't so short that you can't break in time when your dog suddenly stops as well it's a full-on activity you can't relax because you've got a dog running in front of you and particularly when you're, you're training your dog they suddenly stop and you've got to be on their brakes so you have to have enough lead to react to that i just put the, our little grandson away <laughs> Well, let him out, Laura. Oh. We're just waiting for Laura to come back. But the next thing you need is a proper harness that's made for pulling dogs. Don't go into a shop or online and buy any old harness. They will damage your dogs. These are designed to be right and not damage your dog when they're pulling. Now this is a, what I call a half back. It comes halfway back on your dog and that's the one I recommend you get. So that's better for a short line that's going at an angle than the proper, they're called X-backs. For the, what the huskies use, you'll see them on the sedges, and you'll see the professionals use it, and it comes right to, back to the back of the dog. That way they use all their body strength. But the problem with that is, when you're riding on a bike, your lies down like that. So it doesn't work. And it's, your dog gets out of control. But you're better off with a short one. Now this one's Howling Dog Alaska, and it's worked really well for my dog growing up but now he's grown up I'm going to get him a proper husky one that's got straps on it. Hello Harry, this is Harry, his dog boy down under, he always comes out and helps. But I normally ride a bike without a helmet but for doing this I put on a good helmet because you will crash it's not a sport for the faint-hearted. Sometimes your dogs will go really fast. So get a good hat. You don't have to, but I recommend it. But also, I've never seen anyone mention this before on the videos you see about bike jewelry. Need a pair of glasses. Because when you're flying along and there's a bit of a gravel path, those stones come straight up into your face. And if you've got a big dog like mine, it's like being in a house with all the stones. So you will need glasses. I think that's about it. I don't think I've forgot anything. What do you reckon, Harry? <laughs>